A strike by air traffic controllers. From the president, a strong warning. They are in violation of the law, and if they do not report for work within 48 hours, they have forfeited their jobs and will be terminated. From the union, a defiant response. The controllers out there firmly believe in what they are doing, and we will continue the strike. From ABC, this is World News Tonight. And who is most credited with speeding labor's decline? Ronald Reagan, who was president in 1981, fired 12,000 air traffic controllers after they violated federal laws against striking. I must tell those who fail to report for duty that... But the company is standing firm. American has recently... Eliminated. Strong as the threat of firing may be, the administration moved rapidly to employ other weapons as well. Court proceedings to force the strikers back to work were begun. And their oath. Are you more likely to proceed criminal, uh, criminal direction towards leadership than the rank file? Intentionally went into bankruptcy in 1980. Was settled 170 days later when the United Steelworkers Union agreed to pay concessions. Item May 1986. Uh, we had very antiquated equipment and. Uh, that were, there was a need to get some national publicity to get better equipment and uh, working conditions. Any given point of time, be it in the air or on the ground, they are responsible for the safe, smooth, and efficient flow of air traffic. Stationed at 80 control towers across India, over 2,000 air traffic controllers monitor and control movement of an aircraft from departure to destination overseeing an intricately complex network of imaginary routes in the air. For the very first time, National Geographic Channel takes you past the no-entry signs at one of India's busiest air traffic... 1981, over 80% of... Air Traffic Controllers Organization, or PATCO, goes on strike. I'll sacrifice my job, I'll put it on the line, because it has to be now. If it isn't now, it will never be, and they'll stomp on us forever. August 3rd of 1981, which is the day that it started, uh, I, as a supervisor, came to work that morning at uh, 7 a.m., which was my normal work shift. And the area I supervised, which was around the uh, Lincoln and Omaha, Nebraska area, uh, normally the crew that I had come to work for me would be, oh, anywhere from 19 to 23 people. That morning, when I came to work, uh, one person showed up to work with me. And so what we did, uh, we decided that we would, I took one half of the area and he took the other half of the area. And we worked the best we could. Now, it was not that dangerous for air traffic because they immediately restricted, uh, the FAA restricted the flow of traffic and how many airplanes could fly. So uh, things did not get out of hand. However, we uh, did have our hands full on that very day that the strike occurred. Strike today gets one nowhere. It gets you replaced. Some airlines. Uh, that is correct. Gets us replaced. Uh, we may not be asked back. Uh, scabs fill in their places, our places. Uh, it, there's no means to that end. After three days of constant striking, the PATCO movement reached its most critical moment. Ronald Reagan's White House announcement. Government cannot close down the assembly line. It has to provide without interruption the protective services which are government's reason for being. It was in recognition of this that the Congress passed a law 
forbidding strikes by government employees against the public safety. It is for this reason that I must tell those who fail to report for duty th this morning they are in violation of the law, and if they do not report for work within 48 hours, they have forfeited their jobs and will be terminated. blatant case of union busting, failure to keep promises, and going after a union uh, to destroy them. This sent a signal everywhere that union busting was okay. In response to the administration's decidedly anti-union agenda, the AFL-CIO organized Solidarity Day in 1981 to protest these new attacks on labor. For the air traffic controllers, being federal employees, they did not have the right to strike. Uh, that was in federal law. So President Reagan told uh, the controller group uh, on the first or on the second day of the strike, uh, either come back to work in two days, or you'll be terminated. Uh, so he sort of put the ultimatum to the union. The union uh, felt that they were in control because they were severely handicapping the commerce of the United States of America because air traffic control almost ground to a halt. But President Reagan uh, uh, gave them that ultimatum and on the day that they were going or supposed to come to work, the la their last chance, uh, the Union chose to stay out and we had to march on with the very few people that we had and all the controllers were fired. in other large cities like Madison and Racine, absenteeism was not high today, and the Milwaukee schools remain open. However, in Madison, many teachers believe their administration actually condoned their sick. Last night, we act President Mary Bell encouraged people to descend on the state capitol, and clearly thousands of teachers heeded her call. Today, the MacGyver News Service has learned that teacher union leadership is openly considering the possibility of a statewide strike. Its strength and its purpose. 500,000 unionists converged on Washington, D.C. on a steaming hot day in August. In a demonstration of solidarity, the AFT had one of the largest union turnouts in the march.
government cannot close down the assembly line. It has to provide without interruption the protective services which are government's reason for being. It was in...